Hello, hello, I'm Brunton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Alrighty, today we are going to be talking about some high yield organic chemistry, specifically the orgo behind separations and purifications. In this, in this video, we'll discuss the techniques used to extract and purify, as well as isolate organic compounds. Let's start off with extractions. Extraction is a common technique used to separate a specific compound from a mixture. It involves two immiscible solvents. Immiscible means they're not mixing together, so we have two layers, like oil on top of water. So we have here, our nonpolar layer is on top of our polar solvent. So how does this work? Well, we take our molecule that we're trying to purify. In this example, it's this weird oxygen polar carbon thing. And we drop it into our mixture of two different phases. We then shake it. So we cause a bunch of micelles and we have a lot of interactions between all the different phases of these solvents. After we shake it, we then are going to let it sit and separate out. And since what we are trying to purify is polar, it's going to be in the polar aqueous or water phase. So then we just have to suck off the phase on top, which we can do with a pipette or any other type of way. And then we're left with our target compound dissolved in water. And if we wanted to get rid of this water, we could just evaporate it off, and then we'd be left with pure solvent. Another important technique you want to be aware of is called washing. This is the process for removing impurities from a sample by using a solvent that selectively dissolves the impurities. This technique you can think of as sort of the reverse of an extraction, where a small amount of solvent is run over the compound of interest to remove any impurities. Typically, the solvent used for washing is chosen based on its ability to dissolve the other type of solutes. So for example, let's say that on the slab, we have a carboxylic acid. This carboxylic acid is going to be very polar. So maybe that our maybe our carboxylic acid has a bunch of nonpolar things bound to that same plate. So what we would do if we were washing it is we would take some sort of nonpolar solvent like benzene, wash the benzene over, and with the benzene we're going to actually pick up all those nonpolar impurities, and we're going to be left with our polar target. Now let's take a look at filtration. Filtra filtration is a technique used to separate a solid, or the residue, from a liquid, or the filtrate. There are several types of filtration, including gravity filtration and vacuum filtration. Gravity filtration is the most simple one. It involves just a funnel and some filter paper to remove solid impurities from a liquid. This technique is useful when the product of interest is in the filtrate, or a hot solvent is used to maintain solubility. This is typically a lot slower than vacuum filtration. Vacuum filtration is the same thing, except we are now doing it all under vacuum. So the vacuum is going to cause sucking up on the top of the filter paper, which is going to cause more of the liquid to drain through more quickly. So vacuum filtration is what is typically done because it's faster than gravity filtration. Now let's talk about recrystallization. This is a bit more complex than the other ones. So recrystallization is a technique used to purify a compound by dissolving it in a minimum amount of hot solvent. So that's the key thing, a very tiny amount of super hot solvent. This allows more to dissolve than typically would. And if the impurities are more soluble in the product, the crystals will reform while the flask cools, excluding the impurities. Recrystallization is often used in organic chemistry labs to purify the products obtained after a reaction happens. When you're performing recrystallization, the choice of solvent is absolutely critical. The solvent must be able to, one, dissolve the product at high temperatures, but B, not dissolve the product at low temperatures. Additionally, the solvent should not react with the product or introduce new impurities. So you want a really pure solvent. And finally, chromatography. Chromatography is a technique used to separate and identify compounds in a mixture based on the differences in their interactions with the stationary phase and a mobile phase. The stationary phase is shown here in blue. It's bound to the column or to beads in the column, while the mobile phase is a liquid that is poured through. There are many types of chromatography, including 
thin layer chromatography, TLC, HPLC, gas chromatography. And each type of these chromatographies has unique advantages and disadvantages. And I strongly recommend you check out my earlier video on the different types of chromatography. Finally, we have distillation. Distillation is used to separate liquids based on their boiling points. During distillation, a mixture of liquids is heated to boiling, and the vapors are condensed and cooled in a separate container. The collected vapors can then be analyzed for further reactions or whatever you want to do with them. There are several types of distillation I want to talk about, including simple distillation, vacuum distillation, and fractional distillation. The choice of distillation method depends on the boiling points of the liquids being distilled. So if you have two samples that have really big boiling point differences, you'll probably go with simple distillation. Simple distillation is a technique used to separate liquids with boiling points that are under 150 degrees and at least 25 Celsius apart. During simple distillation, we heat the mixture and the liquid at the lowest boiling point vaporizes first and is then collected as the distillate. Simple distillation is often used in organic chemistry labs for purification. Vacuum distillation should be used if the boiling points are over 150 degrees Celsius. Why? Because this technique will prevent the degradation of the products by lowering the air pressure and in turn decreasing the temperature that the liquid must reach at in order to boil. So by reducing this air pressure, the boiling point of the liquid can be lowered and you're not going to be destroying product. And then finally, what I have a picture of here is fractional distillation. So this should be used with the boiling points of liquids are really close to each other, typically within 25 degrees Celsius. Fractional distillation is very similar to simple distillation, but it allows for a more refined separation of liquids based on boiling points. So this fractionating column contains a series of plates or packing material that increases the surface area and provides multiple vaporization condensation cycles. This technique allows for the separation of liquids with boiling points very close together. For the MCAT, what you want to know is the longer the fractionating column, the better the separation. Now you know everything you need about separations and purifications for the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video, and I'll see you next time.